Jupiter Boys. Is it, is it recording? Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Jupiter Boys. My name is Jim Jupiter. My name is Quinn. Josh Groban Jupiter. If only you had the, the wings of an angel of Josh Groban. Oh, to fly. That's there you more, go. That's that, there you Josh go. That's, that's closer. Uh, yeah. We're two boys from the planet Jupiter. And we have stupid discussions every week, so you don't have to. That's that's right. We play with our mind wieners. Uh, Quinn. Yeah. Which side is going to go first? Uh, if we can find. There's the coin. If we could find the which, Darren. Which Kearney, side do you want? I'll flip it this uh, today. The current of truth. I would like the yellow side, please. And it's that's yours. always the plaque. Good news. That was a long coin flip. Yeah, it was. You could look, you could have tracked that on a re- gramophone. On a Richter scale. Sure. Uh, Quinn. Oh. My yeah. topic. I, oh. I was thinking of it. Yeah. As I was driving home. Yeah. 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 Okay, <laughs> this is feeling sexual. Uh, of course you were. Well, because like it was, you were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, like, no. like a lecherous pervert. Okay. Um, okay, but you. Oh, I thought you said you were feeling sexual. Oh no, 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 not not me, not me, myself, and I. Uh, I the, the thing that I was I was discussing or thinking to myself, discussing no, no, with one person, uh, is that sort of there's there's groups of serials that sort of exist for different points in your life. That's okay. I can, you know what I I'm saying? Like, yeah. so when you're a baby, you eat like pablum, Cheer- which is basically yeah, which is ba- or Cheerios. You Cheerios. know, like you'll. Pour, sprinkle some Cheerios baby on a baby num, table. Baby yum, num nums, I think they're called. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you you eat like the the bland nothing things. Yeah, like the ones that melt in your mouth, kind of right. like. Right. Yeah. And and the, and then also pablum, which is basically just shredded wheat, yeah. ground down into a paste, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you move on as you as you become a child to your sweets. Yeah. You know, you got your Fruit lucky Loops charms. You got lucky charms. You got your uh, uh, cocoa puffs. Cocoa puff. You got your cocoa, cocoa puffs. Cocoa puffs. You got your Captain Crunch. Your Captain Crunch, your my personal face, cinnamon toast crunch. Cinnamon toast crunch, yeah. Um, I I really like sugar crisp. Sugar crisp is very good. Sugar um, crisp. Sugar crisp. Uh, I like. And then, oh yeah, and then I guess you go. Well, when and, you're, see, yeah. and, then, and then something happens yeah, because something... you've eaten so many fucking dehydrated marshmallows <laughs> that your guts just rot into a pit of agony. You and pee so, green, yeah. If you, if you um, and so you have to you have to transition away from the garbage empty calorie cereal that's right towards something responsible you know yeah like yeah, a yeah. shreddies like a mortgage like a regular cheerios not um, the honey nut sh- bullshit um, um, um you, you go you go to a mortgage cereal exactly this yeah. is your this is your lifetime cereal and right? then 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 once once after that you you you, you go f- back to pablo again you go back to no 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 you First, before that, you go to like your raisin brands, oh, which yeah. is your well, R, your which I is your say, pension. It's would, your pension. Cereal. I would classify raisin bran as one of the mortgage cereals. I mean, like the more sh- yes, but it's for people who want to keep their poop regularly, and yeah. uh, you have to be like. I would say know. it's the, the the tail end of your mortgage years is your is your raisin bran, and then I'd, you move back to shredded wheat. I tell you, raisin bran is not for me, my friend. No, does it just make things bomb out of you, like Jamaican bobsledders? <laughs> <laughs> Precisely, and, and that I wasn't don't really that like wasn't that. a racist joke. That was just like they moved real fast on that ice. They did down that chute. Cool runnings, man. It was a it's a good analogy for poop. Okay, I just can't. I can't. It's it's one of the most perfect analogies for poop is loge. And also, like if you have a like, just think of the word cool runnings in ter- in reference to poop. Yep. You know, like when you have a poop and it's really brutal and it like feels hot, like yep. it's burning your asshole. Yeah, imagine a cool runnings. It'd be nice. Um, a fucking nice slip right down that tube out of there. Like after a hot oh. poop, it'd be like, the hot poop was like the intro. Like it was like, um, it was almost the, like. O- the overture? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> that's right. It's the beginning of the, the opera. The movement? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The movement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the curtains on the opera, but the curtains rising, not the curtains. Just get the theme of the, the show. Yeah, exactly. And it preps you for the. So, so these serials. Yeah, so anyway. Back to my topic. Yes. Because we haven't gotten to it really. Oh. Except I've just sort of said these things. Yes. I want to create some cereals for new times of your life. Right, you know, right now we've got like three, maybe four, you know, right. periods of life cereals. We need to create some for other times in your life, you know, and they can be specialized. You know, they can be artisanal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For instance, yeah. wedding O's. Okay. Wedding O's? You eat them on the day of your wedding. Okay. Okay. 
They got cocaine in them. No, <laughs> no. So they're they're all diamond, well, gold, golden rings, with marshmallow diamonds. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. And you just mow down those motherfuckers, and you have to eat a whole box on the day of your wedding. Okay. You have to eat the whole box, because inside there, inside that that is box, your wedding ring? is your wedding ring. Okay, well, I don't think I would eat the box. I think I would just pour it out until. No, no, no. It's my... it's the law. It's the law to eat. It's it's the law. You have to eat the entire box. And when you and even if you see it on your spoon, like your actual ring, you have yeah. to put it in your mouth and bite down. If you don't break a tooth, you don't get to use the ring. You're creating a a hell hellscape. It's basically the next Saw movie. But, yes. Um, I think wedding O's are going to catch on. <laughs> I, think I think that's a fun O's new are... tradition to add to a wedding. Except for everything you said. It sounds nice, yeah. Oh, okay. um, except you... for eating an entire box of of cereal on your wedding day, and presumably <laughs> everybody shit, everybody has a a bleeding mouth when they get up to the <laughs> altar, and they shit their pants because they just ate an entire box of marshmallow cereal, which yeah. one one bowl will make you almost poop your pants like that, especially if you're marriage age, unless you're getting married at like sixteen. Nobody can handle no no twenty year old can handle an no entire box. No twenty year old digestive system can handle an entire box and, of marshmallow. And that's being liberal, you know. T- even a twenty seven, forget yeah, about it. You're on the toilet all day at that point. I'm pro- I'm going to propose one for for like a different milestone that I had okay. in my life. It's the first time I smoked weed. Okay. And I think the oh I like this. <laughs> there's, Wheaties. They're, call- they're they're called Weedios. Well, your Wheaties is right there. I mean, Wheaties, Wheaties is right there. So yes, Wheaties. that's right. Um, <laughs> um, marijuana toast crunch, yeah, <laughs> like not even subtle at all, um, or clever cinnamon toast kush, <laughs> like that. Fruit dopes, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Fruit loopies, I don't know. Um, so it's marijuana. It's like so. It's so for the first time you smoke weed, you get this this cereal, right? Yeah. And it has like it's, of course it's marijuana. Of course, it's marijuana leaves. Like it's shaped okay, like marijuana leaves. Okay, they're shaped leaves. like marijuana leaves. Yeah, but yeah. they're green. They are green. So your milk is going to be green. Your milk's going to be green for sure. And <laughs> what they have is like a little pouch inside them. So when they hit milk, they release like a vapor almost. Okay. So your bowl of cereal is literally weed leaves, and they're kind of like smoking they're with just, like vapor. They're just like sizzling. Like it's not gonna like it's not gonna does like hurt get, you. Does it get you high? See, you could make it get you high, but you've already, you've already smoked you've weed. Already smoked weed you don't want to go to first time. It's edibles, bro. Like, be careful. Yeah, you know, yeah, maybe yeah. try a little bit and ha- wait an hour and see what happens. Exactly. So I don't want to make the cereal. But it, it but does. It, it does smoke. It gets nice and bl- like the cereal itself gets blue. Yeah, yeah. And it's got like the best mouth feel. Like they got a bunch of scientists to like st- <laughs> smoke a lot of weed in the laboratory and come up with the best mouth feel. And, like, they tried it, like, this is a trial that they tried on hundreds of scientists that all got blitzed out of their okay, fucking I got, trees. I got one for you. Yeah. For when you, when you have a baby. Okay. It's, the... a, it's a cereal for when you have a baby. Okay. And the, the whole deal of this cereal, the flavor is sort of secondary, right? Because it's right. got more of a utilitarian purpose okay. than the flavor. And the purpose of it is, is you put it, you pour it into a big trough. Okay, oh into, a, into a big, like, into a giant, a big old bowl. All right, you know, thanks. You're talking about... Thanks, I hate it. You're talking about your, your jumbo <laughs> bowls. You pour in some... Okay, not an actual some, trough. You pour in some... Well, just a, a big motherfucking bowl. Janitor's mop bucket, if you can. Because um, <laughs> presumably you're in a hospital. Then you're gonna pour, the you want to pour in some pasteurized milk. Now, it's important that it be pasteurized because this needs to be relatively sterile. Because what's going to happen is... Your the, the mother of your child is going to deliver the infant into that cereal. Jesus Christ. And the cereal is going to be very soft. It's going to absorb that blow like you would not believe. Also, lots of good nutrients in it for the baby. Okay. So do as you soon have as to it, eat the cereal after with all the afterbirth in it? Yes, you do. You do. But I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Jesus Christ, Jim. <laughs> <Jim. laughs> why? Why every time? Why every time you got to take a topic... And just, <laughs> just ruin my, ruin my shit, just destroy me, and all that I stand for, Jim. Why do you have to do this to me every single episode? <laughs> because it's very fun for me. You take my spirit and you slowly tear it down piece by piece. So that's gross. Okay. <laughs> Everything you said was nonsense. <laughs> but 
I agree with the nonsense because you're my brother and I love you. Okay, and, here's, uh, here's one. Here's yeah. one for your very first job. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you get your first job. Okay. Yeah. And um, and basically you get this cereal, and it's really brightly colored, and it smells fucking delicious. Yeah. Okay. You pour your milk on there. The fucking smell is just wafting up. It smells beautiful. It's yep. like fruit and sugar and cinnamon and beautiful things. Yep. You put a you put a, a big old spoonful in your mouth. It tastes like horse shit. And there's pennies in it because that's what you're making is pennies. <laughs> your your job is actually garbage. You feel like you're you're get, you're gonna get a lot out of it. Yeah, yeah. It's a metaphor. It's a metaphor for how I your like, job's gonna go I down. I like this. This is good. This is and it prepares them for. How shitty life is gonna be. Your work, your work life is going to be miserable. Uh, you are going, you're, you're going to be shoveling shit into your mouth for the next for the next twenty to forty years. Yep, that's what I do every day. Yeah, and that is the end of that topic. It sure is. Uh, thank you, Quinn, for playing with me. Of course, even though you're a disgusting pervert. Yeah. <laughs> and what can you do? What are you gonna do about it? <laughs> okay, so. Jim. Quinn. We both know about RPGs. Right? I don't know anything about RPGs. Tell me tell me what an RPG is. An RPG is a role-playing game. Okay, we're we talking tabletops? We're talking video, video games. We're not talking live action, not LARPing? No, we're talking video games, RPGs, right? Okay. Your Skyrims, your Fallouts, your... Um, Legends of Zelda. Legends of Zeldas, uh, if you will. Um, you know, Harvest, well, Harvest Moon can be, I don't really think it's an RPG that much, but, you know, those kinds of games. So what, ha what would life be like if your life was an RPG? So okay. here's what I'm proposing. Okay. Like, okay. how would you deal with coworkers, side quests that are bullshit? Well, you know, the thing about, yeah, well, that's the, that's sort of the thing, right? When, when you're in an RPG, you sort of know right off the bat who the, the important characters are and who are the... Uh, NPGs, you know, NPCs. The, or the NPCs, the non-playable characters, That's right? right? Just the garbage background coding that makes your quest either harder or easier. And sometimes you get a sometimes you get a banger NPC, you know. Sometimes yeah. you get one of those NPCs where and like some, mm, in some ah, games you can like kiss. some games you can bone the NPC, like oh totally, you know, like that's yeah. that's sometimes a thing that you can do. Yeah. Um. So I mean. You know, don't discount the NPC. No, so that, exactly. Let's, let's put let's make that a rule right off the bat for life as an RPG. Because ever all your friends would be our NPCs, right? You can't play as your well friend. unless you're playing like a, a Final Fantasy style where you're you're controlling a host of to turns. Yeah, but I'm talking about your real life being an RPG. Like, well, I mean, if like, it played out like an RPG, Final Fantasy, you take turns, but I'm pretty sure you have to have multiple players. No, not dog. It like it's like a party of like six people. So like anytime you get into a battle, you control each player, but like each per person takes turns. Wow, oh, Final Fantasy is garbage. I don't like it. It's sort of like it's sort of like Pokemon to be honest, because you carry around a party of of yeah, monsters. Yeah, I've never really liked it. Never really liked the turn based shit. I well, I like it for Pokemon, but that's literally because I like the world of Pokemon. Yeah. I, I couldn't get into the world of. Uh, I was the same way. Of Final it, it Fantasy took, took me a lot. Final to... Fantasy and like the the graphics on the on the outside of the the box are like beautiful and stunning. And then yeah. you play the game and it's just like garbage, fucking eight bit. And you're like, what is what? What? I feel betrayed. Yeah. And then they made that movie that was like um, the Uncanny Valley. Yeah. And it just super fucked. super Uncanny Valley. Yeah. It's super super fucked with everyone. Any, any hoozles. Uh, I think in real life RPGs you drink a lot less potions. That's right. Because I mean it's it's hard out there and you don't know if that fucking thing is going to just straight up kill you it'd be, like it'd be nice is to it like, drain cleaner is it a healing potion yeah Who exactly knows? um i think it'd be cool to like smoke weed in a or, or if your life was like an rpg because like you'd like go to take a hit and the joint would just be gone the next minute yeah. like it'd be like boop, boop, yeah and you'd just be fucking toasted. and like your high meter at the top would just like max out and, and then it would just slowly decrease over time yeah and, and the like entire time like everything that you're looking at in 8-bit would just shimmer a little bit yeah, it'd be awesome. Being drunk would be a nightmare. And what if you could see an 8-bit when you were high? Holy shit. What, what if we just focus really hard, because we're both high right now, on seeing an 8-bit? And it didn't work. No, that was a bad, that was a bad experiment. Well, it's partly because we can't focus at all. No, it's because we're high. And, like, and stupid. And, stu <laughs> and we have the attention spans of uh, an 8-year-old. Dogs, so. what are they about? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, dogs should vote. 
I agree with that statement. Actually, that's the most pure thing I've ever heard anybody say. Um, it's a Mabim Bam reference. Oh, God damn can't, it. Can't take credit God for it. God damn it. Every one of our bangers is a <laughs> Mabim Bam. I am tired of it. This is not fun. <laughs> this is... This is unprofessional. <laughs> yeah. Dogs, not, not dogs and RPGs. Dogs um, and RPGs. In Ocarina of Time, yeah. you chase them around. Right. I think that's a great use of anybody's time, is chasing a bunch so. of dogs around. I think so. I, I think I like, um, like in Harvest Moon or in, uh, in Fallout, the newest Fallout, you just find them. I think you just like, yeah. like at the beginning of your quest, right, your adulthood begins and you, you get out, you step out of your vault or you step out of your parents' place and your real RPG begins, right? Because yeah. your child as an RPG is kind of like, you, 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 you're, you're sheltered, right? At the beginning of the game, you're how you sheltered. A, how do you get a dog in Breath of the Wild? I know you can like befriend them at the stables, but yeah, I don't know I, how I'm you pretty can, sure you, you just befriend them you, and you then can't, you, they don't follow Ram around. No, I think you just take. I think you like buy one or something like that. Oh. Um, but in Fallout, you just find him at a gas station, uh, and his name's Dog Meat. And you, is it, yeah, that's what it is in three too. Yeah, um, but it it happens literally at the beginning of the fucking game, like. In Fallout 3, you have to, like, kind of search for them. Yeah. But in Fallout 4, they're like, no, you're going to get a dog as your first companion. <laughs> nice. Um, which is nice. I really liked it. Nice. Even though he's stupid and stands in doorways. He's a oh, fucking yeah. idiot. So, okay. NPCs always standing in goddamn doorways. Yes. And hallways. Oh, and, like, conver- like, conversations would just get stuck. Like, you'd just be, like, stuck on a conversation. Like, there'd be, like, no option to leave the conversation. Yeah. And you're like, Jesus. And it would spend like two days and you'd have to like... Can you imagine if you, you came into the work, you, you came into your office one morning and uh, you sat down at your desk and the guy next to you at, at his desk was like, so, how was your work at, your, your weekend? And you started to tell him, he's like, yeah, me neither. I just hung around and watched TV. And you're like, I, that's not what I was saying. <laughs> and he's like, so, how was your weekend? <laughs> and he just like, he just is stuck on a loop. <laughs> That'd be great. That would be the worst ever because you know what my least favorite fucking conversation on Mondays is? So. How was your weekend? How was your weekend? God, Fucking mind your fucking business. I don't ask you about your goddamn weekend. What I do on my weekend is my business. I'm paid to be here eight hours a day. Fuck you with what I do on my own time. The rest of the time is my time. It's my time. You don't, it's get, my to, time. You don't get to see that time. Exactly. It's not, the, it's not the time you paid for. Listen, this ain't the time you get. You get the, seven, you get the five days a week. You ain't getting the weekends too, bucko. You ain't getting them. No. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Week, I'm a weekend warrior. You're a weekend warrior. But we're... Your warrior style is staying at home. I'm a warrior monk. Yeah. By by which I mean I meditate a lot. By which I mean I sit on the couch for hours at a time. By which he means his his monastery in the mountains is pretty uh, pretty different from the from. It's a Chesterfield in a basement. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so so like other other things like sex in 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 an RPG world would kind of suck. The, yeah, because like every single time you're starting to get into something good. The camera tilts away, yeah, and or the, it fades to black, and you're just like you wake up in the next scene, and you're like, "God damn it, I missed all the good parts." Well, The Witcher doesn't, you know. The Witcher would be is The Witcher's another RPG, do, and it do you doesn't. see the banging? You see, you definitely see some titties, yeah, and you definitely see like I think a hint. But man of cannot look. Can, man cannot live on glimpses of titty alone. That's right. I'm sh- and in Grand Theft Auto, which could be a, uh, considered an RPG. Um, Although that's more of an open sandbox style, um, just kind of shoot them up. Uh, but in Grand Theft Auto, there's a cheat in one of them that you can actually see full penetration. I, somehow I doubt that. Like, I feel like no, that's like it's an, real. Oh, an urban legend. No, I've seen the if video. If it's real, please take a screenshot and send it to us on Twitter, at the Jupiter Boys or at Quinn Jupiter. I've, I can find the video afterwards. Okay, well. It's on YouTube. I would, prefer our, I would prefer our listeners do it for me because I am exceedingly lazy. I'm, yeah, I'm well aware of this. Uh, so what else is in RPGs that would be fun? Oh, like basically going into any store and selling them anything that you happen to have on you. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, I got this rock. I'll give you one <laughs> rupee for it. <laughs> uh, I got this uh, old boot. 50 rupees. It's like, really? It's like, it's just the one boot. 50 rupees. <laughs> God damn it. And take then, it. And take some of this submachine gun ammo too. It's funny. In Fallout 4, there was a cheat where you could um, get as much money as you wanted at, a, at a, a market. Okay. And basically what you had to do is you sold all but one of your bullets. And then you started selling them your bullets. And for, for whatever reason, when you have just one bullet and you st- start selling a bunch of them, like, uh, the other person, your bullets, 
it just like you can make as much money as you want by just being like. Oh, so you just even though you're selling one bullet, you're it's somehow it's allowing you to increase the price or or increase the quantity. Right, and you're only limited to how much the vendor has. Right, you're only limited to how much they how many bottle caps they have, which is the currency in Fallout Four. But what happened? What would happen if like you figured out that in real life, like the cheat, and like it was patched after like I don't know six months of me doing that, like right. just like because it's such a fucking pain in the balls to like find to bottle collect, caps, yeah, to collect, especially in a, such a big map. I was just like, traded a shit ton of like because I pick up everything. Yeah, like, I, just the, the first vendor I see, I just give them all the shit that I've picked up. Well, see, I'm such a hoarder in Fallout, which was like a problem because I would I would hoard specifically yeah. weapons, yeah. and I would hoard um like. Like uh, stuff to eat. Well, here's in here's the other thing. Like, good, good, good point to, that you bring up in RPGs. Your backpack is fucking enormous. It's gigantic. Like, it's bigger than you, and you got to lug that fucking thing around. You can put TVs in there. You can put beds in there. You can, you can put, put big anything. ass robots. Yeah, yeah. Big fucking wh- whatever the fuck you want. Death claw heads. Yeah, just, you, just stuff. Whatever the fuck. Speaking fits in of there. bazookas. Speaking of RPGs, uh, certain RPGs have a, a kind of a. And that's the end of that topic. Thank you, Quinn, for that final point. It was very good. They do have kind of a... Yeah, it's it's true. That is 100% true. Um, Factual. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, thank I'm you. So, I'm sorry your life has ended up this way. Uh, <laughs> where did you go wrong? Where did you... Where, think back real hard. You can get merch uh, of ours at our Redbubble store, including official Dave Franco's Dream Boys merchandise drawn by my brother Quinn here. <laughs> That's the sound Quinn makes when he draws. Um, <laughs> thank you to Christo Graham for the use of our theme music. Christo Graham. <laughs> Thanks, Quinn. Um, so, yeah, like, really, really, truly ap- appreciate you all for listening. And uh, if you, if you want to help us and you don't have any money or time to spend on us, just do a quick little thing. Subscribe, rate, or review the podcast. Or if you can't do any of those things and you're just, like, completely nose blind to that, tell a friend. Tell a friend. You know, or somebody that you just see. Tell a, tell a, a living human. Tell an enemy. We don't care. Yeah. Oh, especially. Tell, especially that's a great. Enemies. Oh, my God. That's the new. That's today's new um, call to action. Tell an enemy about the Jupiter boys. That's right. Because you're going to ruin their lives. <laughs> you're going to make them as miserable as you are. You're going to set them down are, a dark God path. Uh, shoot those nuts. Straight down that miserable gullet of yours, listener. I solved the microphone puzzle. Oh, yes. I've been playing a lot of Zelda, so I mean, it's really not fair for you. What dolphin shark?